In this video, we're going to look at a solid of revolution called Gabriel's Horn. Although, in a sense, this is a bit of a detour, the moral of this video will be well worth remembering for the rest of your mathematical career, and that is that sometimes infinite objects behave in very unintuitive ways. Gabriel's horn is the solid of revolution you get, or the surface of revolution you get, by from taking the curve y equals 1 divided by x and rotating it around the x-axis. Its name comes from the fact that it looks sort of like a horn, I mean the musical instrument that you blow, but because it's infinitely long, only a supernatural being like an angel would be able to use it. And we are going to find the volume of this solid of revolution. And the fact that we're now on an infinite interval is not going to change the volume formula. It's still going to be the integral this time the improper integral of a pi times the radius squared. We can pull pi out. And now we will use our definition of the improper integral. We should rewrite to this as a limit Let's see. Pi is in front of the integral. So not that it really matters, but that pi should be in front of the limit. And hopefully we can take the antiderivative of this as a pretty routine exercise by now. It is negative one over x. So we have the limit as c goes to infinity. Let me not forget that pi of negative one over c minus negative one over one. This goes to zero as C goes to infinity. So we get a finite volume, it's pi. And sure, why not? Remember that integrals represent areas. So if we can have infinite regions with finite areas, there's no reason we shouldn't have infinite three-dimensional objects with finite volumes. Now let's look at the surface area. And we won't be able to actually find the surface area. Instead, we'll use a theorem. And I appreciate the 
irony, considering that I started this video by saying that infinite quantities are often unintuitive, but I am just going to appeal to your intuition with this theorem. Suppose you're working on some interval and you have a smaller function and a larger function. If the area under the smaller function is infinite, then the area under the larger function is also infinite. You cannot have a finite number that's larger than infinity. And if we're willing to believe this, we have no choice but to believe the following about the surface area. Here, is the formula for the surface area. I've gone ahead and taken the derivative and squared it and everything. And I make the observation that this square root is bigger than one. Because one over x to the fourth is positive. So one plus this is greater than one. And the square root of something that's greater than one is greater than one. Now, when you take something, one over x, in this case, and you multiply it by something that's greater than one, that makes it bigger. So one over x times this square root is bigger than one over x. You can perhaps see where we're going with this. One over x is greater than zero. So we are in the situation of this theorem. Let's see whether the integral from one to infinity of one over x happens to diverge. Well, we'll rewrite this according to our definition of an improper integral, then we will compute this integral using the fundamental theorem. And we are just cramming this in here. The natural log of one is zero. As c goes to infinity, the natural logarithm grows to infinity. It's slow, but this does go to infinity. So this integral 
is infinite. And if this integral is infinite, this bigger integral is also infinite. And remember what this represents. This is the surface area. I said at the beginning of this video that when we have infinite objects, we can't always trust our intuition, but it might not be immediately obvious what's so in unintuitive about this. But we have a finite volume and an infinite surface area. So what this seems to be saying, for example, is that if Gabriel's horn existed, as a physical object, we could fill it with a finite amount of paint. We could not, however, paint its inside surface because its inside surface has an infinite surface area. You can go online and find people trying to explain Gabriel's horn as if it were a riddle. It doesn't really need an explanation though, beyond the fact that it is an infinite object it cannot exist in the real world, and that it is therefore not all that surprising if our real world intuition struggles to grasp it. This is something we'll see when we get to infinite sums, where the intuition we have working with finite sums breaks down. And it is something you will continue to see throughout the rest of your mathematical career.